The history of this technique dates back to the late 19th century when Wilmer Groves managed to maintain living cells of the neural plate of chicken radios in a saline buffer for a few days. In 1887, they allowed a shift culture cells from inside and outside body tissues using the technique called tissue culture within the body. He placed skin fragments of vinea pig and embryos in agar and coagulated serum, then inoculated into adult animals and obtained the reproduction of mitotic epithelial cells. In 97, Ross Grambling Harrison published an article for culturing nerve cells and, and monitoring the development of fibers. Harrison overcame the challenges of basic culture and developed a reproducible technique consisting in obtaining fragments of neural tube frog embryos by placing a drop of fresh limb on the sterile cover slip. Once coagulated limb, he inverted the cover slip onto a slight cover slip excavated, generating a hanging drop culture. Thus, with this simple experiment began the cell culture as a tool for researching as well as the birth of the main media of production of monoclonal antibodies, vaccines, and drugs. By 1910, Monroe's bureaus adapted the hanging drop method for working with warm blood cells tissues in which chicken plasma clot was used. In 1910, Carol and Burroughs successfully used plasmatic media in order to grow chicken, rat, dog, and human tumors by the hanging drop method. In the early 1940, Lindbergh developed an infusion pump to maintain living tissue known as artificial heart. In 1952, Dr. Gray achieved the first human cervical carcinoma HeLa cell line with what a continuous line of cells. Dr. Gray distributed this discovery to various laboratories and pharmaceutical companies. A series of multiple achievements was triggered in the following decades. In 1965, Harris and Watkins produced first hybrid mammalian cells, virally fusing human and mouse cells. In 1969, Augustian Sato set tumor lines of mouse nerve cells and isolated clones electrically excitable with nerve prolongs. By 1973, Graham and Van der Ed introduced DNA into mammalian cells in culture and the basis for the development of techniques for incorporating genes into the cellular genome. In 1975, George Kohler and Cesar Minster accomplished the first monoclonal antibodies. In 1992, American Type Culture Association, a bank cell was formed. At the end of the 90s, one of the latest, lastest scientific success in the mammalian cell culture that played a leading role and decisive role happened. The cloning of a mammal by Wilmore, Schnick, and Colevis. Dolly Sheep was the great biological landmark of the late 20th century. In terms of technological development from 50s, Marketing tools and cell culture started turning this technique easy and reproducible to become one of the most powerful tools widely used in research and development of biotechnology applied into pharmaceuticals. Cell culture refers to the removal of cells from an animal or plant and their subsequent growth in a favorable artificial environment. The cells may be removed from the tissue directly and desegregated by enzymatic or mechanical means before cultivation or they may be derivative from a cell line or cell strain that has already been established. Primary culture refers to the stage of the culture after the cells are isolated from the tissue and proliferate under the appropriate conditions until they occupy all the available substrate. This is called to reach confluence. At this stage, the cells have to be subcultured by transferring them to a new vessel with fresh growth medium to provide more room for continued growth. After the first subculture, the primary culture becomes known as a cell line or subclone. If a population of cell lines is possibly selected from the culture by cloning or some other method, this cell line be becomes a cell strain. Normal cells usually divide only a limited number of times before losing their ability to proliferate. This is called a senescence. However, some cell lines become, become immortal through a process called a transformation. Now, culture conditions vary widely for each cell type, but the artificial environment in which the, the cells are cultivated invariably consists of a suitable vessel containing the following. A substrate medium that, in, that supplies the essential nutrients such as amino acids, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals, the growth factor, the hormones, gases such as O2 and CO2, and a regulated physical chemical environment uh, that includes pH, osmotic pressure, and temperature. Cryopreservation happens when a surplus of cells are available from subculturing. They are treated with the appropriate protective agents such as DMSO and glycerol, and store at temperatures below minus 130 Celsius until they are needed. Cells in cell culture can be divided into three basic categories based on their shape and appearance, that is called a morphology. First we have fibroblastic, 
uh, which are bipolar or multipolar, have elongated shapes and grow attached to a substrate. Epithelial-like cells are polygonal in shape and with more regular dimensions and grow attached to a substrate in discrete patches. And last, we have limboblast-like cells. And these ones are uh, spherical and usually grow in suspension without uh, attaching to, to a surface. Now, a quick recap. What is cell culture? Cell culture is the removal of cells from an animal or plant and their subsequent growth. This includes primary culture, cell line, strains, and finding and continuous line. The culture conditions are a medium, a growth factor, hormones, gases, and a regular environment. This also includes cryopreservation in the aftermath. In morphology, there are three, fibroblast, epithelial, and limboblast-like. The safe laboratory techniques are the basic guidelines every laboratory has, such as wear proper personal protective equipment at all times, wash your hands constantly, do not eat, drink, smoke, etc. Some of the equipment used for cell culture are cell culture hood, incubator, water bath, centrifuge, refrigerator and freezer, cell counter, inverter microscope, a cryo storage container, a sterilizer, etc. When choosing a cell line for your investigations, keep the following characteristics in mind non human and non primate cell lines, functional features, continual or finite, normal versus altered, conditions and features of growth. Cell culture models are in vivo, that is intact, animal plant, in vitro, in artificial conditions, and in situ, in place. The cell culture environment is the capacity to adjust the physical chemicals such as temperature, pH, osmotic pressure, O2 and CO2 tension, and physiological such as hormone and nutrition concentration environments in which the cells proliferate is one of the primary benefits of cell culture. Healthy cell cultures that work properly and consistently require great laboratory reagents used to assist the cell culture process, substrates and chelators used to track cell activity in culture, molecules, extracts, and substrates that promote cellular adhesion in a range of culture cell types. Depending on the cell type and application, cell culture techniques and procedures differ. Cells can be obtained in two ways, from a cell bank or by separating cells from donor tissue. When beginning a culture using cells received from a cell bank, the processes of thawing, cell seeding, and cell observation must be followed. If unnecessary tissue is connected to tissue obtained from a donor, it is generally removed. The technique of spreading cells into a culture medium for cell culture is known as cell seeding. After that, you use an optical microscope to examine the cells in the vessel. Subsequently, insert the cell culture vessel in a humidified CO2 incubator and begin cultivating. Because cells take nutrients from the culture media, it must be changed with new medium if it has been depleted of nutrients and enriched with metabolites, and it must be replaced rapidly to prevent the cells from dying out after removing the old medium. After replacing the medium, examine the cells for any signs of injury. Then, using a microscope, make sure it's progressing normally. When it comes to stock preparation, it is vital to make stocks that are identical to the originals which can be produced through primary culture, purchased from a supplier, or transferred from, from another source. Make observations with optical microscope, then using a cell detachment procedure as described previously, harvest cells for stocks. After centrifugation, resuspend the cells in new media to view them. Adjust the cell suspension to the correct number of cells. Add the same quantity of concentrated cryopreservation solution, and pipette the cells back into suspension for dispensing. Pour a certain, a certain quantity of solution into the cryotube while stirring constantly. The cryotube should be put in a freeze, freezer container and stored in a deep freezer after the cells have been frozen. The processes differ based on the cryopreservation solution used. One or two frozen vials should be thawed and cultivated to test if cells can develop in the same way and have almost the same characteristic as before. Once this is verified, stop culturing the cells. Real life problems on cell culture. Cell culture is one of the major tools using cellular and molecular biology, providing excellent model system for studying the normal physiology and biochemistry of cells. Some examples are metabolic studies or aging. Also, the effects of drugs and non-toxic compounds on the cells and mutagenesis and carcinogenesis. 
It is also used in drug screening and development and large-scale manufacturing of biological compounds, for example, therapeutic proteins. The major advantage of using cell culture of any of these applications is the consistency and reproductibility of results that can be obtained from using a batch of clonal cells. Cancer research. The basic difference between a normal cell and a cancer cell can be studied using the animal cell culture technique. As both cells can be cultured in the laboratory, normal cells can be converted into cancer cells by using radiation, chemicals, and viruses. Thus, the mechanism and cause of cancer cells can be studied. Cell culture can be used to determine the effective drugs for exhalative destroying only cancer cells. Virology. Animal cell cultures are used to replicate the viruses instead of animals for the production of vaccines. Cell culture can also be used to detect and isolate viruses, and also to study the growth and development of these viruses. It is also used to study the mode of infection. Gene and cell therapy. Culture animal cells can be genetically altered and can be used in gene therapy techniques. First cells are removed from the patient lacking a functional gene or missing a functional gene. These genes are replaced by functional genes and altered cells are cultured and grown in laboratory conditions. Then these altered cells are introduced into the patient. Another method is by using viral vectors. Functional genes are inserted into the genome of viral vectors and then they are allowed to infect the patient into the hope that the missing gene will be expressed with the help of the viral vector. Thank you, Professor. Here are our references.